From the outside, this utterly nondescript office building in Chatsworth, California is hardly worthy of notice. But on the inside, it's a house of horrors. You are in the showroom of Amalgamated Dynamics Incorporated. We are an Oscar-winning creature effects company that specializes in creating animatronic and special makeup characters. One of the main things that uh, we do is work with rubber. We're probably most known for the Alien vs. Predator series. These two characters represent iconic film uses of rubber suits. The iconic Alien and Predator creatures stalked their own series of movies before facing off in 2004 and 2007 in the Alien vs. Predator franchise. In many scenes, the creatures were brought to life by actors in latex suits. We create essentially wetsuits that look like the musculature of a creature. Rubber has long been the go-to material for creature effects designers. The flexibility of rubber's long chain polymer molecules enable designers to fashion creature suits that can move and that have flesh with a lifelike quality. Inside the Predator's latex face, a series of servo motors, tiny remote control motors, generate the movements that make up a monstrous performance. For the face, where you need ultimate expression, you need to go with a, a softer, more supple rubber. In this case, it was a foam latex, again, that was whipped up to a degree that would allow it to be uh, soft and transmit the emotions of the, of the servo motors inside. Foam latex starts with natural liquid rubber, or latex, that is mixed with chemical ingredients. It's like baking a cake. Once you have a good formula that you like, that you feel comfortable with, you just work around that. More froth equals more softness, vital for the expressive gorilla's head that Matt is making. As you can see, it's got a lot of stretch. The actor's wearing it on his face. He can make expressions. You can make body suits out of this, too. It's great for that. The actor's doing a running scene or something like that. He can actually move. It's not rigid. It's nice and soft. It's soft, but another ingredient helps it hold its shape. This is the curing agent, and this is going to ensure that once I put the actual foam in the oven after it gels, that it holds its memory. Like, say I didn't add this, and I pulled the mold out of the oven, and I opened it up. If I were to touch the foam, it wouldn't spring back. It would just leave my finger indentation all over it and ruin the piece. I'm going to go put it into my giant bowl here. The mixer's wires cut through the latex and leave voids in their wake, which the rubber closes over, trapping the air. Ensuing rotations cut these bubbles to ever smaller sizes. The air bubbles make the latex less dense, more squishy, and ultimately more like skin. It's going to start rising, and I'll use my volume stick so I can tell a gauge of what level I'm at. I mean, you can make this as tough as tire rubber by just not adding any foaming agent at all. And we usually use that for like the bottoms of monsters' feet or something like that, so the actor has like a cushion to step on. It works pretty well. The final ingredient is color. The gorilla, its base color is going to be black. It'll just help with the painting. If it has a black undertone to it. Matt's work with the mixer has achieved the desired latex density for the gorilla's head. Now it's time for the mold. Generally speaking, we use rubber uh, because it's the most flesh-like material that you can get in terms of spanning mechanical joints. It works very much like flesh does. Um, foam rubber, in this case, is very lightweight and it's uh, breathable, so a performer can sweat through it when it needs to come in contact with a performer's face. Being that it's a natural rubber, you have less chemical stuff in it. So this is good. It's friendly, uh, skin friendly. It's time for our skin-friendly gorilla head to go into the oven. The piece is really thin, could be at two hours at 150 degrees. But this gorilla face is fairly thick, so I'm going to go for about eight hours at 150. And that should definitely do it. The one thing you don't want to do is overbake the foam latex. If you overbake it, it becomes very brittle. Which would defeat the purpose of using latex. Though not ready for a performer, our gorilla's head is ready to emerge. So after eight hours at 150 degrees, it's ready to come out. Got to be really careful when opening this. You don't want to tear the foam. And there's the gorilla's face. This character is our silverback mountain gorilla. We've used it in a number of movies and TV shows, and we've used several different kinds of rubber 
uh, in this character. These arms are urethane rubber, which is a synthetic rubber, very heavy and also very durable. The chest is a foam latex. Uh, it's a natural rubber with a cell structure that gives us flexibility, lightweight. The face skin is made out of a natural foam rubber and uh, its expressions read because it has 27 servo motors inside the face and a performer inside the body, in this case Tom Woodruff Jr., to bring it to life completely. Four puppeteers use radio controls to manipulate the servo motors in the gorilla's face, creating a startlingly lifelike performance in a foam rubber face. Now this character can uh, uh, give us a, lot, a wide range of expressions, uh, from a very sympathetic look to a very angry look, and anything in between. And he likes to have his head scratched too, doesn't he? Thank you. In a way, it, it sort of satisfies me wanting to do acting. Since I'm hidden inside, I can be or do whatever I want to do and not have to worry about making a fool of myself. In addition to a performer, a shocking amount of thought goes into a suit like this and seven months of construction.